Hi guys, my name is Mary Poplin. I am Imagineer Systems Los Angeles based product specialist and today I'm going to be showing you a little bit about our 3D camera solver. Now, why do I say 3D camera solver? Well, I say 3D camera solver because it's not exactly a camera tracker. We are a camera assist, okay? Basically what we do is we give you a, a camera based on the planar data that we track in Mocha normally. So let me show you what I mean by that. We're going to talk a little bit about how we track in Mocha, and we're going to also talk a little bit about uh, what we do with that data to get a 3D camera solved. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to draw a shape around this background area. I'm also going to come in and because I'm trying to track the background, I'm going to try to get a little bit more background information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my add to x-plane tool right here, and I'm going to add another x-plane over here on my background so that I end up with a lot of nice data in order to track. So. I'm going to turn my thumbnails off because they're kind of in my way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to track translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective, and I'm going to crank this value up to 100%. And the reason I track this minimum percents of pixels used uh, value up is because that is the accuracy of our track. Now it's very, very, very important in our 3D uh, camera solver that we have the best possible solve that we can have from our planar data. Now we do that by tracking as accurately as we can uh, for the shapes that we're trying to track for. So I'm going to track translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective just so I can make sure that if there's any perspective shift in this that I grab that as well. So I'm going to render forward, I'm sorry, I'm going to track forward just by hitting the track forward button. Okay, and Mocha is going to follow this throughout the shot. Now if I wanted to check my tracking data, I could go ahead and turn on my surface and grid tool, and that would try to show me what my tracking data is looking like. So I'm just going to let that finish. There's my surface tool. Okay, if I want to adjust my track uh, to sort of match that angle a little bit, I'm going to adjust my surface tool and that will adjust the grid, and I can check the accuracy of my track. So that looks really nice. I like the way that looks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and try to solve this shot. It's just that easy. I track and then in order to get a camera based on my 3D or really 2.5D planar data and make that into 3D data, I go to my camera solve tab. Now, when I say that we're a camera solver and not a camera tracker, in other demos I have explained to you guys that Mocha is a planar tracker, not a feature tracker and not a point tracker. In the same way that we are not like other trackers, we are a camera solver, not a camera tracker. A camera tracker is trying to solve for the shot that shot the footage, right? So we're, we're trying to solve for the camera that was used to shoot the shot. Now that's not what we're doing. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get a camera that will solve for this plane so that you can insert 3D objects into a scene based on this plane. Because it turns out for many, many types of tracks, like if you're putting in 3D titles or just one simple 3D object, um, you don't need an entire camera solve for the whole shot. And even those of you who do camera solve uh, on a regular basis know that there are multiple solves uh, for each camera you try to solve. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and call this BG track, just so we have it named. Okay, and we're going to make sure we click on it and we're going to talk a little bit about the way we use this data. So we have a several options in our track. So we have auto, pan, tilt, zoom, small parallax, and large parallax. Auto, if I hit that, will just try to, get, to guess what the camera solve should be. So in this case, it's auto solving at 93%, which is very high. Anything above 70 um, in our camera solve is a good solve. Um, but Otto will try to guess what this is. Now, we are we know that this is a pan, tilt, zoom shot. So if we solve it, we'll still solve the exact same way in pan, tilt, zoom. Now, for pan, tilt, zoom, we only need one layer to solve with. Um, and that layer has to go throughout the shot. But because it's a fixed camera that only pans and tilts and zooms, which is what pan, tilt, zoom camera means, uh, we only have to solve for one frame. Now, I mean, for one uh, layer. If we are going to solve for small parallax or large parallax, we need two layers because we need to compare a parallax, OK? Um, Otherwise, we won't get a solve, and that seems to make sense. So let's talk a little bit about what pan, tilt, zoom is, what small parallax, and what large parallax are. Pan, tilt, zoom, like I said before, is a fixed camera that's just panning, tilting, or zooming. Okay, small parallax is a camera that's way far away, looking at objects way over there, and the parallax between those two objects is going to be very small. Okay, now large parallax is a close camera looking at objects that are closer together, so the parallax between those two objects is much closer. Okay, that is what that means. Now I'll show you an example of that really quickly um, if we have time towards the end. 
But in this case, I'm just going to show you the pan tilt zoom and I'll talk a little bit about our exports. If I didn't know the focal length of my shot, I would check all of these buttons on because that would obviously uh, give me more of a range to solve and it might even give me better results. Let me check that. Uh, yes, if we if we uh, if we guessed incorrectly um, it, and uh, and we leave all our options on, Mocha will solve for just a little bit better of a, a solve than we normally had. So that's a 99% solve. That's almost as good as you're going to get. So what we're going to do now is we're going to export this camera data. We have a couple of options for exports. We can export to After Effects 3D Motion Data. Okay, we can export export to just a normal generic FBX that should be read by any 3D program, and we can export to Nuke uh, with FB, uh, an FBX 6.1.0 3D data for Nuke. Now. The differences between all of these things. Um, the difference between the FBXs for Nuke and for um, for just generic FBXs are not that large. It's just basically one is optimized for Nuke and one is not. Now the After Effects motion data is actually really easy to take over to After Effects. All you have to do is copy it to the clipboard. So I copy it to the clipboard. I go over to After Effects. I make sure in my composition settings that my composition settings match exactly my clip settings in Mocha, right? Okay, this is very, very important or we won't end up with a good solve. Okay. I make sure that I'm on frame one, just like we do with every single bit of data we ever post into Mocha. And I go to edit and I go to paste Mocha camera. Now what this will do is, do you remember that surface that I had in Mocha? It now brings in four nulls for the four corners of that surface and one for the center point. And it brings in a camera as well. And I can start to hook objects up in a shot based on that. Now, do you remember earlier when I said that we operate a niche space, like we're not trying to take away from Bujo or Synthize or any other program like that. We're trying to work with them. So let's say you have data in this shot that's hard to track that a normal uh, feature using camera tracker wouldn't be able to solve. You can then use Mocha to export grids or any other bit of data that you'd want to export. Um, to make sharp data that things like Buju and Synthize and other uh, hardcore uh, camera trackers uh, can solve the actual camera with. So there you go. Now I also want to point out that I can save these um, as an FBX as well and I'll show you a little bit about what that looks like. So we go to export camera data, we export a generic FBX and we save that. I'll just save it to the desktop. Okay, and now all I do is I load that up in Cinema 4D and I set a background. I'm just going to show you what that looks like rather than set this all up because I don't think we have time. But I'm going to go over here to my Cinema 4D. I'm going to load that up and you can see that I have set a background just by um, setting a card with a background and I've made the texture the shot itself. I've made sure that that matches all our um, frame rates and aspect ratios and all of that. And then I've just dragged this model into the um, scene and I have hooked it up to one of those small nulls here at the bottom. And you can see very nicely, excuse me, I'll just hit play. You can see very nicely that I've got my 3D object in my scene. Let me let that cache. All right, and there's my 3D object in my scene. So really, really nice way to get 3D models into a scene very, very quickly without having to do a lot of work. Okay, now now, one of the things I want to point out is that um, we also work with Nuke. Um, I don't have a Nuke file set up for this very quick, but um, we also uh, work with Parallax Shots, and I'll show you a little bit about what that looks like. So in this case, I'm going to open up a tank shot here. We're going to go to 3D camera, tank, results, open that right up. Okay, so I have my tank shot. I have tracked this foreground shape. I've tracked this background shape. This is important because these are non-coplanar planes. In order to solve a parallax shot, I have to have non-coplanar planes, okay? Now, it's very, very important that these are non-coplanar and that they go for the length of the shot and that there's at least two. I must have at least two shapes. Um, I mean, I'm sorry, I must have at least two layers in order to solve large parallax shots. So in this case, I would just hit solve for large parallax change and I would export my camera data to After Effects and I'll show you exactly what that would look like. Um, we're going to go over to After Effects. All right. So in After Effects, all I've done is I've caught over here. I've gone to my uh, tank shot, and I have dropped my footage right in. So, so I've just dropped my footage right in. I have my Mocha camera data. I have my nulls, and you can see that I have put a 3D object into the shot based on my nulls. So this is what I end up with 
for a parallax shot. So guys, that is the new Mocha version 3 camera solver, and I really, really appreciate you guys sitting through this, and I'd love to answer any questions you guys may have. I am Mary Poplin, Imagineer Systems Los Angeles-based product specialist, and you may reach me if you have any questions at marypp at imagineersystems.com. Thank you.